Hi guys, this is a second video in the series on chemical energetics and today we'll be looking at bond breaking and bond making. So chemical energetics So we're going to take an inside look at how bond breaking and bond making actually influences whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So in the last video we talked about what an exothermic reaction is and what an endothermic reaction is. So if you've not seen that video, please go back and watch that video before coming back to this video. So. Um, Let's take a look at an example. Okay, say I want to react hydrogen gas with chlorine gas and in the process form hydrogen chloride gas. Okay, so it turns out that this reaction is exothermic. So I'm just going to write that there real quick. So let's take a look at the mechanics of what's actually going on. Like what what do we have to do to make these guys to react. Well, the first thing you have to do is you got to break the bonds between these two hydrogens here. So I'm going to represent these hydrogen atoms like that. And I will represent my chlorine atoms right here. So chlorine is much bigger than hydrogen. So I'll draw bigger circles. So the first thing, right? Step one, if you like, is to break these bonds here. So I'm going to, so step one is to break the bonds. Now, as you might imagine, if you try and break something, right, if you try and break a pencil or a piece of wood or something like that, you're going to have to put energy into it, right? You're going to have to exert some sort of energy to break that piece of wood. So energy is absorbed by the bonds uh, in order to have them break. So we say that bond breaking is an endothermic process. Okay, so breaking bonds is endothermic. Okay, just bear it in mind as we go along. So let's see what happens. Now that we've uh, broken the bonds on these guys what do they look like now so having broken the bonds I now have my hydrogen kind of floating around freely my hydrogens floating around freely and I have my chlorines also floating around freely, right? So they are kind of floating around. And so the hydrogen meets the chlorine. And what happens? They form a bond to give me the hydrogen chloride that is the product of my reaction, right? So they float around and they find each other and it turns out that this is energetically favorable. So they actually do perform this task. And when they kind of snap together, um, energy is released in that process. So when you form bonds, energy is released. And remember what uh, word we use for releasing energy is? Well, that word is just exothermic. So bond forming is exothermic and bond breaking is endothermic and because these amounts of energies required to break the bonds in the reactants and form the bonds in the products are different uh, you get an overall energy change in a reaction that manifests itself as either an endothermic reaction or an exothermic reaction depending on the relative amounts um, of the energies taken in and given off. If you require more energy to form the bonds than energy that's given off when you break the bonds, 
then overall because the endo part is uh, you know endo part is more you get an overall endothermic reaction whereas if you have the converse situation where more energy is released while you break while you form the bonds I beg your pardon then energy taken in uh, when you break the bonds then because the exo part is more than the endo part you have an overall exothermic reaction so because this is an overall exothermic reaction I would expect that more energy is released when I form the bonds than energy is taken in when I break the bonds so I can represent it on an energy level diagram here So here's my energy and let's show um, hydrogen here and chlorine here. So when I break the bonds, I'm absorbing energy. So energy is going into the system. So if energy goes into the system, it will rise. So energy of the system rises. and I form these independent hydrogens and chlorines floating around right so that's the amount of energy taken in right there the difference between these two levels and um, I mentioned earlier that more energy is released than is absorbed during this reaction so when I'm forming the bonds I'm going to have to jump to a level that's more than the level I went up by. So I went up by this much, and I'm going to release this much energy, which is more than the energy that was absorbed right there. Okay, so this is my exothermic reaction. So here's where I'm forming bonds. Here's where I'm breaking bonds. So breaking bonds requires that much of energy, forming bonds that much, and So I have my bonds formed between hydrogen and chlorine to form hydrogen chloride. So as you can see, because more energy is released when I'm forming bonds than is absorbed when I'm breaking bonds, then overall the reaction went from a high level to a low level. So we say that the reaction is overall exothermic because it went from a high energy level to a lower energy level in the process releasing energy hence if you touch the test tube on this reaction it's going to feel hot so I can translate this into an overall uh, energy level diagram over here so I'm just gonna draw this smaller energy on that axis so I will have my hydrogen and chlorine here going down to my two hydrogen chlorides right so this is without showing the intermediates so let's call these the intermediates So this is a diagram with the intermediates. This is a diagram without the intermediates showing that it's overall exo because um, the products are at a lower energy level than the reactants. So <clears throat> in this video, we showed how bond breaking and bond making um, factors into um, whether the reaction result, the resulting reaction is overall exothermic or endothermic and in the next video we'll take a look at some um, examples on how we can do calculations um, based on bond energies for these sorts of reactions.